Proverbs 30, verse 21 says, Under three things the earth trembles, under four it cannot bear up. A servant who becomes king, a godless fool who gets plenty to eat, a contemptible woman who gets married, and a servant who displaces her mistress. Hey everyone, welcome to Wellness by JF podcast. I am so happy to be here yet again. Before we start, go on ahead, grab your beverage of choice, your cup of chai, your juice, your water, anything that tickles your fancy. And join me as we unravel a very necessary evil in today's society. That last bit that Proverbs 30, 21 speaks. The one that says that the earth trembles when a servant displaces her mistress. I know you might have uh, watched uh, our other episodes on our, our Wednesday edition where we speak about marriages and some of the things that are happening or affect us in our marriages. And so today I want us to speak about a topic that is very much a part of our marriages, but we do not get a chance to speak about it. And, you know, once you get married, you just find yourself in the... Um, in the in the in the flow and you have to go with it and you might have gotten from the verse that i read but generally speaking it i just to speak about the role that um in kenya we call them house helps um uh, in the developed world it might change a bit into nannies babysitters drivers caretakers gardeners uh, all these people who actually come into our lives and make our lives a little bit better by helping us out here and there in the home and how having these people sometimes might change the dynamics of our relationships. And so this episode specifically is for any lady who is in married, uh, who is married, sorry, or you're aspiring to be married or you have children and you know that you interact with, I can call them staff, but in a domestic environment. So, like I said, it is a necessary evil. I think in today's time and age, especially in Africa, you might not be in a position to have a career, raise a family, um, have a successful business without necessarily engaging in the service of a house help or a caretaker or a nanny and so needless to say when you engage this um, relationship normally starts as a very pro or it not even starts but it should be a professional kind of a service where you meet the employee and you are the employer but you are employing them in your home what this means is that you open the door and you are the one who welcomes these people into your home and I'm assuming that by the time they're coming in, you guys have spoken about it. They know or you've shared with them what they're supposed to be doing. And then what happens in a scenario where a servant or a house help, a babysitter, a caretaker displaces the mistress? The good book says that the earth trembles. Now, <laughs> grab a cup of chai because I said today it's going to be hot. Wait, before you continue watching, can you ensure you like, you share and subscribe? It helps to support our channel and it helps to grow. Our stats show that around 70% of you guys have not subscribed. So do us a favor and click the subscribe button. Now, continue watching. Despite this relationship being professional, this is one of the relationships that can become very very personal because you live with this um your help in your home they know the good the bad the worst of everything about your life in fact 
there's a time I used to interact a lot with um, security personnel and I was very very surprised to find that majority of all the crimes that happen especially in the context of the home the the major or the first major suspects are normally either the security or the house helps because these people know you like a clock they know what time you wake up they know what you eat they know uh, the secrets between you and your husband or your wife they know everything about you and it is by the nature of their job that they're able to you know interact with you on that very personal level and i know that you might you might try to you know keep things like um, professional but sometimes you might find yourself getting caught up where the house help ends up having an affair with the man of the house and displacing you internationally there's a few actually who've been caught with this phenomenon and as embarrassing as it is and as as bad as it is these very uh, notable people um, found themselves in that web. Um, ben Affleck comes to mind, although I know he tried to deny here and there, but that story was out there. Uh, George DC of uh, Real Housewives of uh, New Jersey, also there was that rumor that started. And I think even as far as in the 80s, Mick Jagger at some point, and he was very successful at this point, was rumored to have had an affair with his um, with his uh, on the road uh, nanny, you know. So this is not a new phenomenon. Locally, <laughs> I'm yet to see any person who can accept that they've had an affair with a nanny or a house help, as we call them, domestic managers or DMs, as we call them. But I know you married women, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so today I invite you, let me know in the comments, have you had an experience with it? How do you deal with this issue in your home? Because you're busy, you have a job, you have your business, you have your life going on, you have children and you want to raise your children, you want to have the, both, uh, the best of both worlds. And so you let this uh, lady come in and before you know it, so this is what I want us to speak about today. Um, you know, the truth of the matter is that we need our domestic managers. We need them. Um, you have your life going on. You have things going on. And you're not able to be at work and to be at home at the same time. And so most of the time you find that for you to be able to have a career, especially as a career or a corporate woman or even a business woman, you're willing and you're married and you want to have children but then you have to bring in somebody who's going to take care of the kids and it it becomes very very unfortunate when and if maybe your husband ends up having an affair with the house help this is not a new phenomenon like i've said but as usual we always like to keep it hush hush we don't like to speak about it and that's why today i'm uncovering this lead and i'm encouraging all the married women to come and let me know if they've had this experience and how do you deal with it of course by virtue of being married even me I'm, i've had an experience with it i once had a house help who and i was very desperate for uh, for this uh, for that matter i was working and i was i had just gotten pregnant with my child and um my house help that i had just decided to leave I do not even know what happens to house help sometimes when they discover that you're pregnant but she decided to leave the way they normally live without a notice and so i was desperate and i called uh, a bureau and i asked if they had a lady and of course they told me yeah they have a nice lady a quiet lady who's you know coming to you know uh, has been trained she's ready to work and i said ah sure so i went i saw the lady of course when i saw her my instincts told me that this is really a house help because the way she was behaving, the way she was looking, was not giving house help vibes. I mean, if you know what I mean, if you know, you know. So, uh, but I said, you know what? Anyway, at the end of the day, we also want people who, I mean, we can interact with. And, you know, it doesn't mean that somebody being a house help means that they're less of a person or that they're lonely. Uh, sometimes it's just a stepping stone to, for you to go wherever you want. So I said, ah, maybe it's one of those ones. And so I took this girl home. And let me tell you my na, karibu kinirame. 
because like i said i was expecting and so on this particular day i had seen a bit of two behaviors here and there but i was ignoring i was not uh, feeling too well and uh, i needed somebody to help me out so on this particular day uh, the first red flag was i went for a party with my elder daughter and when i came back i found my house help in a very very extremely short skirt and she sat in the living room um, as if she was watching TV and um, my husband also was seated in the, on the other couch. Um, he was watching a game, I think, on his laptop or something. So when I came in, in fact, it was my husband who opened the door for me and when I saw her with that skirt, mm, I, was, I was like, mm, why would you wear such a short skirt? But anyway, I didn't give it much thought and I just went and I placed uh, my daughter in bed and... A few minutes later, I just called my husband to come to bed. And you cannot believe it. Five minutes later, the one who had sat there as if she was... And it was very late in the night, I must say. So the one who had sat there as if she was watching something very interesting on TV, literally turned the TV off and went. So um, my, my, my red flags were... My flags were high. I was like, okay, I noticed that and I see that. And then shortly after... <clears throat> I had some colleagues of mine visit um, because I was unwell and when I, I was uh, explaining to my help that um, maybe she should go and get milk from the shop so we can make chai, I think I wasn't looking at her but I think, <clears throat> excuse my voice, I'm having a cold today. So one of my colleagues actually caught her looking at me very badly and it is this colleague who actually asked me later and it was a man actually he asked me how long have you been with this house help and i said maybe probably about a month or two and he said listen i think you need to let this lady go because the way she was looking at you was not nice so i just put one and one together and i realized that apana this house help is not here for house help uh, issues or she's not here to do work she's here to do other things and so i do not know if maybe if she'd have stayed things would have been different i'm not sure but what i know is that I, first of all i noticed that extremely short skirt and also just um by by all means i'm her boss right but her looking at me in a way likely to suggest that maybe she doesn't like me or or maybe she, we are in competition or something like that so anyway what are some of the things that you could do as a married woman to ensure that you don't have a coup in your own home. In Proverbs 30, 21, it has literally said, if this happens, the earth will tremble. And so in as much as it is happening left, right and center, even the good book tells us that this is not right. This is not acceptable. And I know that even your husband, by the way, he's not, a, he's not like a helpless bystander. In all of these things and in fact your vow to faithfulness is between you and your husband but there's some things you can do because remember you're the one who went and brought this person into your home and like I said in the beginning we need them so there's certain things uh, I feel that as married women we can do to ensure that um, you know no matter what happens we try to keep the, we try to keep the relationship as it's supposed to be and the first one that comes to mind and I love saying this and I will keep on singing it over and over again create healthy boundaries see you're the one who brought this lady in the house and she's there to do maybe cleaning to help out with the with the with the children to help you out around the house please have boundaries let her know like for instance there are certain um, times for instance in the evenings I would want you after you're done with the with cooking after you're done maybe with the cleaning of the of the utensils please give us uh, family time and you also can take your time to go and rest and rejuvenate for the next day you can also have uh, healthy boundaries like um, you are not allowed to enter certain rooms like for instance your bedroom because I mean your bedroom is your sanctuary and that is where you and your husband spend a lot of time and so you can be able to you know you can be able to protect yourself by ensuring that your house help doesn't find you in compromising situations because again the other thing I notice most of them don't even know this knocking phenomena most of the times they just come budging into the, the the bedroom and you know they can find you or find your husband in, in compromising situations then what you know 
so you can create those healthy boundaries you can also create boundaries when it comes to things like clothing like like how they how they dress you know you can give them uniforms where they they're always neatly and um decently dressed because at the end of the day i mean if a woman it's a woman it's not a stone she's a woman and if she dresses like in a in a revealing manner when your husband is made of stone you know he's he's um he might be tempted to you know try on the other side and at that point i don't know who you're going to blame you know so you you, you might as well do your part as a woman where you either get them a uniform there's also a uh, a thing that I used to like doing where you just get them a dera, um, gift them like four or five deras and they can wear those whenever they're whenever they're working. You know, it's long, it's flowy, it covers, it does the work. Because remember, what brought them to your home is working, right? The other thing that you can do is I mean have conversations with your significant others. At this point, like this is our marriage and we are not letting our marriage spoil or get lost for anything and we are going to make our marriages thrive so have conversations with your with our husbands like babe i need you to support me on this um if you see anything that is off you let me know don't keep secrets um sometimes because when you're working um, you, or traveling you might leave your partner at home and so let your partner know and have trust between each other such that they are able to let you know if there's something that is going off um the other thing that you have to do and i know many 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 mothers and many wives struggle with this hire and vet your nannies and your workers as much as you can and until you reach a point where you feel that you are comfortable with the person that you have if you pick or if you see a red flag please do not ignore it because we we normally have god-given instincts that help us know when things are going wrong so don't keep quiet if you pick a red flag even though i know sometimes it gets very tiring how many nannies will you have how many uh, drivers am a caretaker am a security will you have even the neighbors will label you names they'll say how you have a bad heart and you can't live with people but do not tire this is your home and you cannot give the enemy space to come and do you in your home the way they want so hire and fire and vet and do background checks until you're able to be comfortable remember when we are getting hired at work our bosses do not play with us they do extreme background checks they check i once saw a company that checked until the third last company that you worked and they were asking for three different references from each company that you have worked when i saw that i felt this is a very thorough reference and background check if somebody can do that and you're working in the office how much more for somebody who you're opening to come into your house sometimes to cook your food sometimes to stay with your baby so do not when it comes to hiring and vetting do not drop the ball and do not feel like you're desperate take your time and do what you have to do to ensure that your house is is um is well taken care of the other thing that we can do for our health eh, give them off days and you have to honor that on their off days, let them go. Let them rest. Let them go wherever they want to go. Some of the people that work with us are actually married. And so on their off days, they're able to go reconnect to their spouses. And at the end of the day, they come back feeling fresh and ready to work. You know, if, you, if you're if you so strict and you're not, you don't honor those off days, this is what sometimes can make your nannies or your domestic staff to become very aggressive. You know, a human being is a human being. To be honest whether you want to go up or you want to go down and if because the bodies are wired in a certain way please do not be the one that now stops them from going and you know getting some when they need to get some so on off days let them go don't worry about it when they come back let them take a shower put on their uniform and let's proceed with the rest of the day um lastly <coughs> if the line is breached and you're 100 percent sure that the line is breached you have to let that nanny go you have to let that domestic worker go and then after letting them go you now have to deal with your spouse because the commitment to stay faithful is between you and your spouse the domestic worker is just any other player the domestic worker can be the one in your home or can be the one in the office so don't take out your frustration on 
on the on the on the domestic stuff if the line is breached the most frustration should go to your husband should go to your spouse who crossed that line and i know i started this episode by reading proverbs 13 21. i'd like to ask did you enjoy the conversation do you agree with what i said please let me know in the comments i would love to hear from you a question that came to my mind when i was reading this verse is does it mean that a servant because remember it said a servant who becomes king and at the end it said a servant who displaces a maid servant who displaces her mistress does it mean that a servant or a maid servant or our house helps as we call them are not worthy of love of marriage that is not what it means what this verse means as per me as per my opinion is that a sudden rise to power or to fame is almost always disastrous there is a reason why you got into that home as a maid and so if you by any chance feel that you can come and displace your mistress let me tell you even the good book says the earth will tremble and that your end is going to be disastrous you cannot build your home on another woman's tears and so for our house help for our domestic workers when we welcome you to our home kindly keep the boundaries respect the uh, the madame and the man of the house and by god's grace you are going to be able to have your own home and to be a happy home and you also will not meet a servant who wants to displace her mistress I've been your host, JF. This is Wellness by JF podcast. And I'm so happy that you decided to come and be with us until this moment. Do let me know what you think in the comments. And next week, I'm literally going to go from my own personal experience into a house help who we brought into the house. And guess what? She was practicing witchcraft. See you on the next one. Thank you.